Good morning. Welcome this morning as we gather to worship the Lord together. Can you turn to somebody next to you and just say, it's going to be a good day today? Amen. Because Jesus is with us, it's going to be a good day. So let's stand together as we come before the Lord this morning. There have been those that have been praying already for this morning and those that have been preparing. So we just want to press in and offer him all of our praise and all of our worship because he's worthy. Father, we thank you this morning that we have the privilege, you've given us a privilege to know you personally, to worship you personally and corporately as a body of Christ. Lord, we thank you this morning that your Holy Spirit is here. He's free to move amongst us. And Jesus, we want you to be exalted over all. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. And so, Lord, we just offer up our worship and our praise to you this morning. Lord, I pray your blessing over the worship team now as we just lift up together our hearts in worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's worship together. Joy of the Lord, rise among us. The 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 jo
trust you in your presence I will God, I just pray for a fresh outpouring of your spirit. And I pray that you'd speak to each one of us as we worship you. So, Father, we just take this time to say I love you and we love you. He is jealous for me. Loves like a hurricane, I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. And all of a sudden, when all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, how he loves us all. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. Just take that in. And oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. Bye. 
Indeed, I love you. I love you more than you realize. I love you more than you recognize. I love you more than you can even comprehend. And I am indeed jealous. I am indeed jealous for the things that hold you away from me, the things that hinder and the things that stand in your way of your relationship with me from allowing you to give everything, every part of your heart to me. I am jealous that those things stand in the way and I am coming with my spirit and I am coming as a hurricane and I am coming as a volcano and I am going to blow through you and I am going to remove those things that stand in your way and your relationship with me is going to be so intense and so intimate. You will experience me in new ways that you have never known me before because I am coming in power and might to blow through the vessel of your being. Let's take that in and praise him with it. It's a good word. See, we are his portion. a minute and just begin to receive that he loves you our language does not express the dimension of God's love his love is unconditional his love is unquenchable his love can never be turned away his love draws us to himself We're going to prepare to enter into communion. And when I ask the servers to come on up and prepare for that, but I want you to stay in this place of just letting his love fill you. Now there's someone here that I just sense you're going through very hard times and or maybe you went through hard times in the past and it's hard for his love to be able to flow into your heart. And I want you to just to look to Jesus. He is the author and finisher of our faith. Let him melt that away. Let him melt that wall 
away. Let him melt that defense away. Because our days are so short until he returns again or until the end of our life. Let's not allow things that would hinder that, hinder that close walk with him to take away those times as we were singing there. So Lord, I ask you for just an overwhelming wave of your love here. Lord, on each one, yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord, on each one. Lord, just as we heard in that word of prophecy from Terry, Lord, I thank you that you speaking through her, Lord, according to the gifts of the Spirit, are emphasizing the power of your love, the transforming power of your love, the disarming of your love, and the healing of your love. Let healing happen now, even through this time of communion together. You may be seated and just stay in a place of worship. Servers, you may go ahead and pass the bread and the cup as we prepare for communion. Just focus on his love. And if he brings to your attention any sin, then just bring that to him. It says in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sin, that he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then you just thank him for that. If you're here today and we just ask that for you to receive communion, that you've taken a step to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Communion is sitting together with Jesus and with one another. We're here to get today with one another, but we're here today to commune with him, to commune with our Lord and Savior. If you've never taken that step, you can take that step today and, and just turn to the Lord in prayer with your heart and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins and my ways. I acknowledge that you are the Son of God and that you died for me and then you rose from the dead. And now I just give my life to you and I ask you to come into my life now and transform me and I receive you, Lord. That kind of prayer opens heaven up you know, you may not have experienced heaven in some amazing way, maybe you have, but when you pray that prayer, you experience heaven. Heaven opens up when we turn our life to Jesus. He doesn't wait. He runs to you like the father ran to the prodigal. When you just say, Jesus, I open my life to you. And I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. He runs to you because of his love. Thank you, Lord. We will wait until everyone has received. And then we will eat and drink together. As I was waiting on the Lord this morning, there were a number of scriptures he brought to me for just this time. Isaiah 40, verse 31. But they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So as you're waiting on him, receive that too from his word. John 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Prospering is also maturing in Christ, just as your, your life and your soul matures in Christ. First John chapter 3 says, Beloved, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. 
Beloved, now we are children of God. And it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Hallelujah. Thank you for the sweet presence, Holy Spirit. Your sweet presence here with us right now as we prepare for that communion. says in the Gospel of Luke, when the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took the bread and gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, we act upon that scripture right now. Lord, as we take the bread in our hand, this bread pierced just as you were pierced. This bread pressed just as you were pressed under the sins of the world. And Lord, we take it now and lift it before you. And Lord, I ask that you would bless and sanctify it now as we share this communion bread together with all together and also with you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let's eat the bread. Thank you for your body that was broken for us, Lord, including the stripes upon your back that you purchased our healing, Lord. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he said, take this, divide it among you. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. So Lord, we take the cup today, the cup that this reminds us, this reminds us if by, it reminds us of your blood, Lord that was poured out, a new covenant we have, a new covenant in your power, a new covenant, God, in all that you want to do in our lives. And we thank you for the cleansing of our sin by the washing of the blood too. And Lord, we thank you for it right now. And I ask that you would bless the cup all around this room now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's drink together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for washing us cleaner than clean, whiter than white. Thank you, Lord, for that. We receive your blessing now today. We thank you, Lord, for this. In Christ alone, my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still Striving cease 
my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand, in Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for I am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of Christ no guilt in life power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny, no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand, till he returns or calls me home. Can you just stand? Let's give him praise. Let's worship. Go ahead. Just give him a shout of praise. Lord, we worship you, O oh God. Lord, we give you glory. We give you glory, God. We give you glory, O oh God. Hallelujah. 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 You know, as we do that, that shakes the heavens. Amen. Not God's heaven, it shakes the enemy's heaven. <laughs> Amen. And it puts them to run, it puts them to flee because we know whose we are. Amen. We are the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you just turn and greet someone this morning? Bless them this morning. Welcome them here today. I want to invite you to take out the connection card in the meantime as you're being seated out of your bulletin for everybody here, our regular attenders as well as our new guests, and ask that you would fill it in. And on the reverse side, please include any prayer request or any praise report. And uh, we want to be able to rejoice with you what God's doing. We also want to be able to pray with you for any things that you have that are going on. So please fill that out. You can put that in the offering in just a little bit. Um, I want to ask Anita, Pastor Anita, to come up. Um, the if, what's that? The video. Okay, there's a video first about the if gathering. If you wondered what if is, you have to ask the ladies. They will tell you what if is, okay? 
Okay, IF is a, uh, a wonderful move of God that he has been bringing about amongst the women in our nation and actually around the nations. And it started a few years ago. And it's, uh, there, there's an annual uh, gathering, a retreat gathering down in Texas. And then there are local events that happen around the world, actually. We're going to be hosting one of these events on this coming Friday, March 3rd, from 7 to 9 p.m. And Saturday uh, the 4th, from 8.30 to 4.30 and the uh, speakers, which will be broadcast here, are Jenny Allen, Lisa Turkhurst, Ann Voskamp, Jill Bresco, which are just some of them. There's more. And I've previewed it. It is awesome. The teachings are wonderful. The Spirit of God is moving. There's a lot of, uh, it's a move amongst younger women as well as those of us who have more years under our belt. So uh, I just invite all of you ladies to come on out. It's really going to be an awesome time, uh, relational building and getting stirred and inspired. The theme this year is... Um, if we could, if, if we returned to the simple ways of the early church and uh, focused on sharing the love of Jesus and moving in the power of the Spirit in our daily lives, what could God actually do? Do you wonder what could God actually do in and through us? So I invite you to come on out. It's open to all the women. Um, there's only a $5 uh, cost for lunch. We ask you to register today and pay up front so we know how many meals to, to order. And uh, just come on out and enjoy. And there is a video if they have it. It's a one-minute video. You have it there? the book of Acts, and we're going to dream together about what it looks like to get back to the simple, old, awesome things that the apostles did in the early church. Everything in our world right now feels a little chaotic, and something about the early church, the way that they served each other, the power of God through the Holy Spirit that was on their lives, it was anything but complicated. It was simple and pure. And I'm afraid we've become a generation that performs and, and does big acts of faith, but we don't do quiet acts of faith that nobody sees. That's my dream for us, that we would get really good at the things that nobody sees. So we're gonna go see one of the most powerful generations on earth in the way that God and power move through them. Right after Jesus ascended, the apostles and the beginning of the church, join us, come be a part. Amen. That sounds good. Yeah. Amen. And that'll start Friday evening coming up at 7 from 7 to 9 on Friday evening, and it will be over in the meeting place. Is that correct? Okay. Something else? It was live on February 3rd and 4th, but we're doing a rebroadcast of it here for our purposes. Okay, good. The other big announcement I want to make is that we need servants, those with servant hearts, to help with the Chosen 300, which is a mission ministry to bring uh, a hot meal to the homeless in Pottstown. And we need all the different helping hands, those cooking, those helping to transport, those willing to go and minister, those willing to, uh, to lead in worship. And Teresa, Teresa, would you stand up a moment? Teresa is our excellent point person. She's a saint, and we thank God for her. So please see her or the office and uh, just let us know if you can help. That's coming up the first Saturday in March, uh, which is March the 4th. All right, there is, um, as we heard last Sunday, Hannah Hunter is getting ready to go on a trip to Kenya, which is going to be to reach to uh, a lot of the youth. They're expecting maybe up to 500 youth, and they're going to be bringing things for them uh, on their trip there. So there is a, a sheet out in the lobby on the right-hand side table. If you would like to bring some items that they will bring with them in their suitcases, please pick that up and, and certainly be a help uh, with that. I know that would be a blessing. Several, several of our people are going on that uh, mission trip, and we're thankful for that and what God is going to be doing there. There's people getting saved. There's people getting healed. You know, it is the book of Acts. When you go out of this country, it is the book of Acts. There is no other option in other nations. It's the book of Acts or nothing. And uh, so we need to hear this word, and we need to grasp hold of it and, and run with it. All right, if the ushers would come forward, we'll receive the morning tithes and offering. This morning, we are very blessed to have a guest speaker, as I call him, but he's not a guest to all of us. Drew, would you come on up? Drew and Stephanie. <laughs> Drew and Stephanie have been leading, leading the youth group, and uh, they've been doing an awesome job, and he's been pastoring them 
as a uh, young man, but I also want you to know that we here look to raise up the next generation. Amen. See, look at his head. There's no gray hair there, okay? It's not. Look at this head. See all the gray hair here, okay? So I'm looking for the next generation, okay? And this is a part of the next generation. I thank God for you. Amen. So, Lord, we thank you for this morning, that what you're doing already in reaching lives and hearts. God, I thank you for the offering today that we bring to you. And Lord, I thank you now, too, that you call young men, young women, Lord, to the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you for Drew and for Stephanie. And Lord, I ask that you would bless him this morning as he brings forth the word, that you would make it easy, that our ears would be open, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit be upon him now, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Come on. It's an honor to be here, guys, with you, and I uh, just want to honor the leadership. We... We are so blessed to have them, and, and they're just so awesome. Would you guys mind standing up for me real quick? As I was worshiping in the back, I can't really explain it, but I felt the Father's burning love for you. Just you. Whether you know him or whether you don't, today's the day where he's going to take you into more. More of his love, more of him lavishing his affections on you and through you. So I just want us to all take a moment. Just close our eyes and just hold out our hands. I know this might be weird if you, you don't know Jesus, but just go with it. I hear him say, you are outrageously loved. You are ridiculously loved. You are completely loved. If you walk away with nothing else today, it's that you have a good father. And he says this to you, my child, my son, my daughter. You are loved. So, Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit in this place, Lord. We thank you that you hold the words of eternal life. Lord, that you are the giver of the tongues of fire. Holy Spirit, just fall upon this place, Lord. Activate our hearts to just cry out, Abba, Father. Activate our ears to hear your voice. Our eyes to see you and see others in the same value that you see them. And Father, I just ask that your word and your spirit would meet each one of us today as we encounter your love and as we walk with you as an encounter of your love. Lord, I bless everyone's here. I thank you that they are so loved by you. And whether you know it or not, things are just heating up for you. Just heating up for you. And we worship you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give the Father a shout, please? Come on. Mm. Good stuff. All right, guys, if you would, uh, if you would open your Bibles to two places, John chapter 15, Matthew chapter 3. We're going to spend predominant amount of the time in Matthew chapter 3, but um, if you would, just open your Bibles there for us. In 2007, I was 22 years old. I 
and never sought the Father passionately, but he sought me. And one day, sitting in a service, my second Christian service on an Easter Sunday, I heard the word of God preached, and I heard the gospel for the first time. And in hearing the gospel, my heart received. The Holy Spirit drew me to a place where I was near, that I could, by grace, through faith, receive this word. And in that moment, the word and the spirit met. And I encountered my first touch from the Father and the Father's love. And in that moment, not only did I saw, see Jesus, I heard his voice. I felt his touch. And he activated me for who I truly am in him. And every day since, I've been living in this crazy relationship of communing with the Father, hungering for his word, living by his spirit, but also passionately living to love from the one for the one. So this is a very important message. It's, it, it's, it's on my heart. I wanted to share with you guys something that, that I live, that, that, has, that really drives my life. And it's just one touch. One touch of the Father's love. And everything changes. Guys, there is one who always was, one who always is, and one who always will be love. That is God. He's your Father. He is love. And love has a voice. He has the most beautiful name. And let me tell you his name. His name is Jesus. One God, an eternal love relationship with three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. We all share or get to share in this relationship that always was, always is, and always will be. And then there came to be you. His thought. His dream. The dream of love. You are no accident. You are no accident. I'm just going to declare that. You are the dream of love. You are the object of his affections. The object of his love. You are the desire of his heart. You are the expression of the love in Jesus Christ. You are his child. Whether you know it or not, he's come to get you and bring you back home. He says, come home, child. Come home. Come into Papa's love. And then he's going to send you out to go get brother and sister. Love reminds you that you always belong to him. Just one touch of the Father's love. And he reveals who he is, your good and loving Father. Just one touch of the Father's love. And he will redeem and revive all that you truly are. His beloved child, his son, his daughter, the object of all his love and affection. It was you. If it was just you... Just you that came home. You were worth it. You were worth it to him. Whether you're out there saying, I don't deserve this love. I'm not worthy of this love. Let me tell you something. You're valued at a price, and his name is Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ. That's how you equate your worth and your value for him. Just one touch of the Father's love. And it empowers you to be who you were meant to be. One in the Son. One in love. Just one touch of the Father's love reminds you of your destiny. Why you are here. Do you ever ask yourself that? Why do you wake up every day? Why are you here? I'll tell you why. You're here to love from the one for the one. Otherwise, he would have brought you back up the moment you got saved. Guys, I want us to just paint this picture. Everything flows from Jesus, through Jesus, all the way back to Jesus. It's a difference of living from his presence than for performance. Back in the times of Jesus, the Pharisees, not meaningfully maybe, had a spirit of religion. They tried to perform what they thought would be pleasing to, in the sight of God. Yeah, do, do that for me. Thank you. Cool. Is that better? Jesus lived in the presence of the Father. He said, 
Whatever I've seen him do, I do. Whatever I've heard him say, I say. He lived from a place of sonship. If you would, read with me here. It says this. As the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love, he says. And you will abide in my love if you keep my commandments. And this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has none than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. These things I command you, love one another. Not everyone will become a pastor, an evangelist, a missionary, but every one of us loves from the one and is called to love to the one, for the one. Every day of our life, we are impacting and influencing people around us. Are we letting him love? Everything that Jesus was, everything that Jesus did, it flowed from knowing the love of the Father as his son and for his children. Likewise, everything we do and represent in Jesus Christ is rooted and grounded in this same sonship, in the same love. We must be loving as an overflow of knowing him who is love. This is both the power and the purpose of sonship, guys. God the Father desires that all relationship, every single soul on the planet, be transformed into their original image, into the image and likeness of the Father, or should I say the Son, into the image of Jesus, into the image of love. The gospel is simple, so simple. I do this a lot. Steph doesn't like when I do this, but Jesus showed this to me in secret. When I allow him to love me, be loved as the beloved, I behold him who is love, and with him I become love. Be loved. Be love. That's, that's your destiny. The calling on your life is how God's going to use you. The destiny is who you're going to love. The destiny is who you are going to affect and draw closer to him, who he's going to save through you. Yes. Heidi Baker, a great inspiration to me. She is one who lives from the one for the one. She uh, is a missionary in the bush of Africa, and she sees radical miracles. I'm talking blind eyes opening, deaf ears hearing, uh, the lame walking. She's rescuing the orphans. She's ministering to the widows. But she loves from a place of intimacy and overflow. And I love how she puts it here in, in, this, uh, in this verse here. And let me just step down so I can read it. It's when you become immersed in the love of the Father that you truly begin to love like Jesus. I will say this again. It is when you and I become immersed in the love that the Father has for me and for you, that we truly begin to love like Jesus. The Father desires to immerse you, hold you, and take you to a place so far beyond what you're thinking and, and your head and your intellect. He wants you to, to take you into a place where the river of God flows freely and the miracles happen all around you because love has come. He wants to fill you entirely with his Holy Spirit. There's no greater priority for the Father, nor should there be for us, than intimacy and pursuit, what I call intimacy and overflow, loving from the one for the one.
do we forget that the gospel changed with just one word, just one touch, just one faith, through just one Lord, in just one moment, through just one body, through just one breath. And each one of us is being touched still. Jesus saves one soul at a time. He loves one soul at a time. Each soul is precious to him. In just one moment in his presence, through just one word of the Father's lips, through just one touch of his Holy Spirit, Jesus lived in perfect, unshakable sonship. I love that word, unshakable. He lived unshakable from the moment he heard the Father, was touched by the Father, and communed with the Father all the way to the cross, and I love the way he stopped for the one. He was faithful to completing the will of the Father. He was the good pleasure of the Father. He didn't live to please God. He was the pleasure of God, and he lived by the presence of God. I just declare over each and every one of us, even myself, that we will not live from a place of performance like we're lacking when what, who we're called to be, but that we will live out of who he is, who he's called us to be, and how he loves. He outrageously loves the one. I expect at the end of this service for people to be pouring out to, to Teresa and helping next Sunday at Chosen 300 because every soul that's coming into that building is worth everything to Jesus, everything to the Father. Just one touch is all they need to be back in Papa's arms or to be activated in his love. Okay. Let's do this one more time. Awesome. I can think of no other story, no other moment in the scriptures that paints this better than at Jesus' baptism. One of my favorite moments in all of Scripture. It reads like this. Giving you some context. John the Baptist was baptizing in the Jordan, and he said this, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he who is coming after me that is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry, And he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee, verse 11 or 13, to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you're coming to me? But Jesus answered him and said this, Permit it so now, for thus is fitting for us to fulfill righteousness. Then John allowed him. And when he had been baptized, guys, uh, it's up there now, guys. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from the heavens and said this, This is my beloved Son, With him, I am well pleased. This is my beloved son. With him, I am well pleased. Help me out, Daniel. All right. In just one moment, guys, just one moment in the Father's love, and behold, The heavens were opened to him. Just one moment in the Father's love. Activated Jesus into seeing, hearing, and communing with the Father. It directed his every step in the will of the Father to every person he touched all the way to the sacrificial death on the cross. In just one moment in the Father's love, he activates God's grace upon us to empower us to believe and be born again. No longer slaves to sin, but children of God. Righteous, redeemed, (laughs) 
revived by the love of the Spirit, empowered to walk in the same sonship, in the same relationship that Jesus had. That is something worth rejoicing in. Grace empowers each and every one of us to become someone that only Jesus can be. Grace imparts the love and the righteousness of Jesus Christ, the very relationship of the Father, so that no one is lacking in any good and perfect gift. No one is lacking in anything. We have intimacy in the Father. Just one moment is he enough to change everything in the life of another who the Father so desperately desires to reveal himself to. He desires to rescue and redeem in the power of love. Just one moment in the Father's love takes someone who once cursed God to become a child of God, to be led by the Spirit of God, and have a heart that beats and cries out, Abba, Father. That's the power of just one moment in the Father's love. Just one word from the Father. It was all that Jesus needed. And behold, this is my beloved Son with whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Just one word from the Father's love was the only word that Jesus ever lived from. It was the word that made him unshakable, immovable, unstoppable as God's beloved Son. It is the same word that we are called to live from, from just one word of the Father's love. It's the only word we need to receive that is both saving and unshakable faith. It secures our identity. It becomes the word of our testimony as sons and daughters of God. And just one word from the Father's love can someone else receive the extension of God's saving grace. Through one word of faith, we can move mountains. We can transform atmospheres. We can change the destiny of another. As a family, we decided to go up to New York City one day to, uh, to love on people, to be led by the Holy Spirit, and then see sights. So we weren't going up there to see the town. We were going to love the people. And um, we found ourselves uh, ministering in, in a park um, that you know a church was organizing, a Hispanic church, and there's all types of walks of people there, you know, uh, from saved to people who just don't know God. And, and um, the Holy Spirit led me to all these different people. But there was one guy that really stuck out to me. And he said this to me. He said, tell me one reason I shouldn't kill myself today. Do you know what it's like to lose $32,000 on alcohol and gambling? To have your family disown you? And I heard the words of the Father. And I spoke this to him. I said, let me ask you something. Do you know how outrageously loved you are? And the Father led me in the Spirit to speak something that meant something to him. He was rocked and changed in such a way that, that, that the Father set up this moment he was carrying around uh, like a flask of vodka, like a huge bottle of it. And he was drinking, and he was just all upset. And we're, we're worshiping and sharing the gospel. And he comes up crying eyes. And he says, I want to come home to the Father. And he gave his life to Jesus. And the cool thing is, the Father said, throw that bottle and get rid of it. And he literally like punted it. He punted it, and he's crying, and we're all hugging him, and he's crying with tears of snot, but in that moment, it was just one word that he needed, in just one moment, just one touch, guys. Help me. Oh, went to the back. Okay. Just one touch, guys, and just... <laughs> Just one moment, through just one word, through just one touch. And Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit to the cross, 
to the resurrection, to the one, to the right hand of the Father. Never underestimate the power of God's one touch for you and through you. We're touching people all day, every day. But are we allowing him to touch the lives of other people? Just one purpose. Jesus was led with just one purpose for the God's redeeming love. It was you. It was you, guys. It was them. It was for him. Just one purpose of the Father's love. And that's to to honor the one and love for the one. Just one name, guys. Just one name reveals the Father's love. And it's Jesus. Scripture says this, there's no other name by which one can be saved. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. There's no other name, guys. There's no other name by which anyone can come to the Father. He says, no one comes to the Father except through me. Is it easy for us to share the name of Jesus? You know, what are we doing? It's not about heaven or hell. It's about lost sons and daughters and the love of the Father. Are we more propelled to share Jesus out of fear people will go to hell? Or out of fear that they'll never know the Father's love for them? That they'll have life pass by and they'll never experience just one touch, just one word, just one moment with him. That they'll never experience eternity with him. That they would never experience the relationship that they were made for. Do we see how valuable we are? Do we feel what he feels and sees what he sees when we look upon another? Or are we getting caught up in the day-to-day grind and just passing by? Pearls of great price. That he can touch through you. What is one soul worth to him? What is one soul worth to you? Everything. It's worth the blood of Jesus. Guys, if we aren't waking up every day with a joyful expectation of encountering him and becoming an encounter for him, you're missing out on the greatest adventure and your God-given purpose here on the earth. If we're not waking up with the expectation of meeting him so that we can be an invitation of the Father to anyone wherever we go, we're missing out on who God has called us to be. And I say no more. Would Jesus not leave the 99 for the one? Let me tell you something. Just one soul is worth the Father's love. Just one. And Jesus knew this. He would have died for just one, as I mentioned earlier. And we know this. But by loving from his presence and not performance, we reach for the one and know that God who is love is faithful and true. All we need to do is deliver his love. We, we sow seeds and water, but God brings the increase. It takes the pressure off. All we're called to do is to love one another as he loved us. And if you're that one soul today, you don't know the Father's touch. You don't know the Father's word. You don't know him as a good father. You've never experienced his love for you. If for nothing else, this message was preached for just one soul, for you, so that he would reveal the Father's love. 
Jesus came to reveal the Father. When we love from his presence, we can rest on the power of God to move outrageously in the love for the one. That's when miracles, signs, and wonders just happen. When you're carrying the presence, you're carrying the love of God, you can expect blind eyes to open, deaf ears to hear, the lame to walk. You can expect heaven shaking earth, but heaven will never be shaken. It's immovable. The kingdom of God cannot be shaken. My prayer is that we live immersed in the Father's love, that we live from the fullness of his Holy Spirit, and that our lives would be testimonies of how he loves us. Just one touch of the Father's love every day. It's just one touch of the Father's love to one person that can change the world. I'm living proof. The disciples are living proof. The early church is living proof. You are living proof. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. You are a testimony of love. You. The word has become flesh through you. The word does not come alive by studying it, but by becoming it. That's the truth. When you, when you believe it and you behold it with him, he says, you'll become it. Are we letting him love us? Are we letting him love through us to the one? Who's going to be touched by the love of the Father through us today? We'll go out to eat. We'll go home. We should always be loving on our family. But we should always be loving on our family. Lost brothers and sisters. There's lost brothers and sisters and brothers and sisters who've come home. It's one goal, guys. It's the family of God for the love of the Father. I want to tell you another story here just as we wrap up. It's a story of a man named Steiner Skipness of the New York Post. I don't know if he's a believer or not, but something that he did intrigued me. He decided as his 2016 New Year's resolution to make one new friend a day for a year. And he did this for one purpose— Because he couldn't stand just taking the subway, riding the bus, walking by people that had great value, great worth. And if he could just touch their lives, even by befriending them and being a smiling face or a kind word of love, he knew that he'd be impacting their destiny. The end of our Holy Spirit field trip We were just asking the Father, is there anyone else, Lord, before we went home in New York? And the Lord led us down a certain street to a man who was very downtrodden. And the Lord's love for this man was really uncontainable. It was like almost like, you know, if you have a stomach ache, you you can't stop but feeling it. I mean, I was drawn to this man. And we get up to him, and I said, hey, listen, man, we just want to, to bless you. We've got food. We've got clothes, clothing. We've even got money. What do you need? And he looked me in the eyes with tears, and he said this. He said, do you know what I've been doing all day? He said, I prayed for you. I prayed that God would send someone to lay their hands on me to bless me and recommission me in who I was called to be. This was a brother of Christ. Guys, we laid hands on this brother, and I'm telling you, he got touched by God. He got filled with joy. We were hugging, loving, shouting on the streets, dancing. And you know what? He said he felt the touch of the Father. And I reminded him, this is who he is. 
This is who you are. And remember why you're here. We recommission you in the name of Jesus for the one. And we pointed down the street to the block down the street where there was a homeless gentleman laying and people walking by like as if it was just a bench. And he remembered who he was. And through just one touch of the Father's love, what it did for him, it could do for them. It could do for them. The Father is inviting you to be loved. To believe you are loved. To make it a priority to seek first him who is love. Love him. Be loved by him. And with him become that love to the rest of the world. That's why you're here. Each one of us, whether we know it or not, we're burning for more. Why else come to church? Why else listen to the sermons? Why else read the word? Why else spend another moment in his presence? It's because there is a hunger inside of you that God has put there that says, seek my face, and you cry out, your face I will seek, Lord. That's the truth. Each one of us has been destined for more, so much more. And the more you receive, guess what? The more you get to freely give. If you would, guys, just join me on, my, on your feet. I'm just going to pray and commission you out. Just close your eyes and hold your hands out. If you know this song, just sing it with me. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Let's sing it again. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Give a shout to Jesus. Come on, spirit. If there is one who does not know that love, he's a good, good father. And you are loved by him. And all you need to do is repent of who you're not. You're not sin. Sin belongs to Satan. You were never meant to be sin. So you say, I am not sin. I repent of all sin. And it's gone from me, Father. I believe in the one name that reveals the Father. The one name by which I can be saved. The one name I can have life and life more abundantly. And that's Jesus. And just say this. If you don't know him, I believe in you, Jesus. I, I release to you the faith. All my faith to you. And I receive you as my life. Holy Spirit. Come and love me so I can love from the one for the one. So, Father, I commission everyone in this room into intimacy and pursuit, into intimacy and overflow with your Holy Spirit, that today's the day that we extend your love to just one, just one, and we would know that you are faithful and true, that nothing you do, your word cannot return void. It will fulfill. It will fulfill the purpose in which it was sent. So, Father, we honor you. We love you. We worship you. And Holy Spirit, just fill us up to overflowing. And everywhere we go, may the living water flow. In Jesus' name, amen. One more shout for Jesus. Come on. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We're going to transform the world with you through your love. You, we're seeking first. Amen. Well, if you ain't got fired up yet, we need to lay hands on you to raise you from the dead. Amen. Awesome word. Praise the Lord. I want to ask the Alder Ministry team members to come on up. If you need to 
do some business with God or you just need someone to agree in prayer with you, what Drew was declaring today is truth. You know, we need to grab a hold of what's truth and believe what's truth. In this day and age, there's information, there's misinformation, and there's disinformation. But Jesus is the only one that gives the truthful information. Amen? He is the Word, and His Word always stands. And so I want to invite you as we close on this song, come on forward if you want to receive prayer, if you want to just join in prayer with one of the members here, if you want to receive even the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to be over here on the left side and uh, ask for you to, you know, if you want to come, I'll be glad to pray for you today because God is here in this place. And we thank Him for His Word and for the preaching of the Word today. Father, Your love is pouring out right now. It's been pouring out here all morning, Lord God. Father, we thank you for the love that also you poured out through Jesus on the cross who died for us, O oh God, that it was your love that held him there. And Lord, we thank you for your sweet presence as you are upon us and as we prepare to go now, Lord. Your presence is with us every minute of the day now. And Lord, let us go out and love that one from the one that has called us and saved us now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you go. Amen. Give the Lord a praise for that. So feel free to come up for prayer, and uh, you're dismissed to go in Jesus' name. You are the one who was
circumstances try to say yeah, I will trust in you I will lift my voice and I will say you are great to praise you are the Everything will change 